In this video, we'll talk about site-specific recombination. As the name suggests, the site or a specific part of the DNA is crucial for these kind of recombination reaction. So this kind of recombination reaction, just like any other recombination re reaction, needs certain degree of homology between two sequences. But unlike other recombination reactions, these recombination reactions are site-directed and orientation of the sites matter. It leads to integration of a DNA fragment into a target sequence. Ultimately, site-specific recombination is highly specific, fast, and efficient. Let's talk about some outcomes of the site-specific recombination. There could be many outcomes, like insertion of a DNA sequence into a target region. In this case, the red sequence is getting integrated into that green region. And notice that there is a certain degree of orientation that is maintained in this recombination reaction. There could be other outcomes such as deletion. So this red sequence is the part of this entire region, but due to some particular orientation, this sequence can be fluxed out or moved out of this region and deleted. There could be also inversion. That means you can see these sequences in a form of A and B. And due to inversion, their orientation can be changed. And all of these can possibly happen. Now let's talk about the enzymes that leads to this kind of site-specific recombination. The key enzyme that plays a vital role in this kind of recombination process is known as site-specific recombinase. Now, any recombination, uh, re recombinase enzyme would have uh, some kind of like nucleophilic center. Most of the cases, they are either serine or tyrosine. So, there are two types of site-specific recombinase. Serine recombinases, which has serine in their active site and tyrosine recombinase, which has tyrosine in their active site. So let's understand that how site-specific recombination reaction works. So here you can see a segment of the DNA. Now this is the site-specific recombinase, which has the serine moiety. Anyway, it has that nucleophile from the hydroxyl group. It would attack in the phosphate backbone. And this results in creation of a enzyme uh, DNA complex. Eventually, uh, this kind of complexes would be required to carry the reaction forward. Now, let us try to take help of some uh, block diagrams to understand this process better. So first, let's talk about how serine recombinase works. So serine recombinases lead to formation of DNA breaks and serine recombinases form this kind of uh, phosphate DNA hybrid with one strand. Now eventually what happens, these strands get passed and ultimately resealed to form the overall uh, integrated sequence. Now here you can see the recombination is complete. Tyrosine recombinase is a bit different from serine recombinase. Here, uh, one strand at a time is taken care of. That means the breakage of two strand doesn't happen simultaneously. Tyrosine recombinants forms those enzyme uh, DNA complex for one strand only, in this case the upper strand. Strand exchange happens for only one strand right now. Eventually the second strand is also exchanged and the recombination process is complete. Now this is the fundamental differences between serine recombinase versus tyrosine recombinase. The outcome is same, but the way the outcome is achieved is different. Let's talk about some biological examples of site-specific recombination. Lambda phage genomic integration into E. coli is one of the example of site-specific recombination. You know that fudge actually uh, injects its genome into the E. coli, and in case of lambda fudge, the genome gets integrated into the E. coli genome. There are certain sites in the phage genome known as ATTP sites and there are certain sites in bacterial genome known as ATTB sites. These sites 
recombine with each other and with the help of integrase enzyme which is an example of tyrosine recombinase enzyme and that leads to integration of the phage DNA into the E. coli genome. Now other examples can be obtained from the HIN recombinase mediated DNA inversion in Salmonella. In Salmonella bacteria there are two kinds of flagella H1 flagella and H2 flagella. Now HIN recombinase uh, based example is a great great uh, example of how these flagellar gene expression can be modulated by side directed recombination. So a region known as HIN give rise to HIN recombinase which is capable of performing site directed recombination and there are two important recombination size, uh, sites known as Hicks L and Hicks R. Now there is a promoter adjacent to Hicks R which controls the expression of Fidge B and Fidge A gene. Fidge B gene give rise to H2 flagellin which is an important flagellar protein and determine which type of flagella the bacteria would have. And which A give rise to H1 flagellin repressor. This repressor blocks the expression of H1 flagellin and ensuring that particular bacteria would gain a H2 flagellin containing uh, protein. Now, due to this uh, HIN recombinase mediated site directed inversion, the overall orientation of the HIN recombinase and the promoter site can be altered. Now you can look at the promoter and the HIN recombinase, you can appreciate the orientation is inverted right now. Now as a result, the Fidge B and Fidge A genes are very far apart from the promoter region. They cannot be regulated by this promoter. That is why H2 flagellin and H1 flagellin repressor are not produced. So by default, H1 flagellin is the key uh, molecule right now. So right now we can see just by changing the uh, sequence orientation or le which leads to inversion, the bacteria can decide whether to express H2 flagellin or H1 flagellin. And this is a great example how site directed recombination, recombination can regulate a transcriptional outcome or fate outcome of an organism. Now let us talk about the biomedical applications of site specific recombination. The lessons that are learned from biology are applied for biotechnology. Anyway, the first example is gateway cloning. Gateway cloning is a cloning strategy which does not involve any restriction and ligation. It involves the recombinase enzymes and site directed recombination more specifically. So it the, the site directed recombination, what we learned for phage is utilized in gateway cloning. In this case, we can see our insert in blue and we need to clone it in an expression vector. So basically, this particular seg segment is flanked by ATT B sites and the donor vector has ATT P sites. So these, these two sites can recombine with each other with the help of BP clonase enzyme and that would allow the insert to be incorporated into the entry clone vector. Eventually, the entry clone vector uh, and a destination vector can be can recombine with each other with the help of LR clonase which has ATT L so these vectors has ATT L sites and ATT R sites which again recombine with each other ultimately giving back that ATT B sites so ultimately in the expression clone we can put our gene of interest note that in this entire sequence we never used a restriction digestion strategy we use recombination which is much more efficient compared to restriction and ligation systems Gateway cloning is widely used nowadays in molecular research labs. The second system is Cree-Loxp system. Cree-Loxp system is a transgenic system used in mouse or many other organisms for generation of conditional mutants. So here we have a conventional Cree mouse which codes for a recombinase enzyme which is crossed with a Loxp mouse. So in the Cree mouse, a tissue specific promoter would uh, drive the expression of Cree recombinase. Eventually, these mouse would be crossed with a LOXP site containing mouse. So in this case, LOXP sites are specific recombination sites which are flanking a particular genomic region. When they are crossed together, Cree recombinase would be generated, which is a tyrosine recombinase, and Cree recombinase would, flank, would sit on these uh, LOXP sites 
ultimately based on the orientation it can either delete it or invert it in this example the particular site which was flanked by locks p site is deleted and thereby three exons are chopped off and a mutant form of that allele is generated and this strategy is used by the mouse geneticist very frequently to generate conditional mutants in the laboratory usage so now we understand how important site directed recombination and the principle behind site directed recombination is you can get more notes and flashcards in my facebook page follow us on instagram support our channel via super thanks see you in next video